Sony has one of the most impressive booths at this year's IFA conference. And of course, the star of the show is the company's new flagship phone, the Xperia XZ. I'm Martin from TechAltar, reporting to you from Berlin, and let's take a look at it. With the Xperia XZ, Sony is keeping true to its mission of, well, confusing the hell out of people by releasing a new flagship phone twice a year. And yet, playing around with one makes me think that if there has ever been a Sony flagship to be excited about, it is probably this one. Much of that has to do with refinement. Where the X performance was a decent yet unimpressive phone, the XZ improves on it in most of the right areas. You now get a silver, black and dark blue option to choose from, all of which look absolutely gorgeous, and USB Type-C is here for the first time ever in a Sony phone, which I think is an absolute must for a current flagship. The fingerprint reader is still on the right, but on the front the screen size is up from 5 inches to a more generous 5.2 inches. It's still Full HD in resolution, but at this size I think that's pretty much ideal, and colors and brightness are all fantastic. You also still get front-facing stereo speakers, and the phone is still water-resistant. Sony's software skin hasn't changed much either, and that is totally alright with me since it is relatively lightweight and doesn't really get in the way much. It is stock Android in most areas, yet it has just enough unique elements to remind you that you are, in fact, using a Sony phone after all. Performance during my quick hands-on time was, unsurprisingly, flawless. The excellent Snapdragon 820 is still here after all. And while an extra gig of RAM would have been appreciated, I have yet to experience any of my phones use more than the installed 3 gigabytes here anyway, so I don't really mind that either. The 2900 mAh battery is also a slight bump up from the X performance and comes with not just quick charging, but also Kunovo technology to prolong the longevity of your battery. A pretty important thing when replaceable batteries seem to be dying out. In addition, you also get micro SD card expandability to add to the 32 gigs of built-in storage. The main thing Sony wants you to focus on though is the camera tech it brought to the XZ. The 13 megapixel selfie camera sounds good on paper and seemed to perform pretty well on the show floor. I was told that the rear camera uses the same 23 megapixel main sensor as its predecessor, which is actually a bit of a bummer, but at least now you get finally 4K video recording. Um, better late than never I guess. More impressively though, there is now a laser for better focus and an infrared sensor to give you more accurate white balance. I'll have to reserve my opinion on the image quality for later, but I would like to show you the camera demos that Sony had set up. First was the improved predictive autofocus, which tracks targets even through objects. Second came an improved version of the steady shot video stabilization feature, which now works on five axes and looks ridiculously smooth. And last was a demo of fast capture, which lets you take a picture in less than a second. It's actually so fast that the image gets taken before the camera app even launches. And that, boys and girls, is why every smartphone should have a dedicated camera button. So overall, looking at the Xperia XZ, I can't help but think that this is everything the X performance should have been half a year ago. The slightly bigger screen and battery, the Type-C port and improved camera and the beautiful new colors leave no doubt that if you want a Sony flagship, this is the one to get. I'm a bit worried about the actual image quality because of the old sensor, but other than that, I think Sony did a great job at improving their flagship in all the right ways. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a like, follow me on the socials, and don't forget to subscribe. Studies have shown that it's good for you. Bye bye.